Hello everyone, welcome back to another video with Mr. Coder, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to solve Igor slash Flower Boy, question D from Code Forces round 1020, division 3. So Flower Boy has a garden of n flowers that can be represented as an integer sequence a1 through an, where ai is the beauty of the i flower from the left. And Igor wants to collect exactly m flowers. To do so, he'll walk the garden from left to right. And each time, choose whether to, to collect the flower at his current position or not. However, the i flower he collects must have beauty of at least b of i. And you can't go backwards. You have to go from left to right, and then that's it. And, but Igor noticed that it might be impossible to collect m flowers that satisfy, that satisfy his condition. So before he starts collecting flowers, he can pick any integer k and use his magic wand to grow exactly one new flower with a uh, beauty of K and he can place it anywhere in the garden, which means between any two flowers before the first flower or even after the last flower. Because of his magic abilities are limited, he may only do this once, so he can't keep doing this unlimited amount of times. So I'll put the minimum integer K Igor must pick when he performs the aforementioned operation to ensure that he can collect M flowers. If he can collect M flowers without using the operation, I'll put zero, so basically just, you can just put a, a flower of beauty zero, that's the equivalent of the same thing at the beginning, since you don't have to pick it up anyway. And also, if it is impossible to collect the M flowers despite using the operation exactly once, you just print out negative one. So as you can see in this case right here, so if uh, Igor grows a flower, as said here, of beauty six, and place it between the third and the fourth flowers, so that'll be... Uh, that, that'll be right here between the third and the fourth, so uh, six. Then the garden will look like three, five, two, six, three, three, five, eight, one, two, which then he can select this five as his first one picked, this six as his second one picked. Then he can do the, for example, he could do the three as as this one. As this one picked, then he can do uh, 5 as this one picked, and then 8 as this one picked, and that will lead to 6 working, since it can be uh, beauty. So as a sample states, it could also be this one, these, this 3, 2. It could be either 3, 2. But what, what if you don't add, like, a 6? What if you try adding nothing? So, uh, 4, you need at least to be a 4, so you'd have to get this one. You need at least a beauty of six, so you go all the way over here. A beauty of two, you can go here. These these two have nothing. So that's how you notice that it has to be six. So after further inspection, like you, you can prove that it is six. So then, and that's just one way to check to make sure you understood the problem correctly. Because if you don't get six, then of course you understood it wrong. So that, then you notice that you always want to greedily choose the first flower that is greater than or equal to the beauty needed. So the the key thing though is you don't know where is the optimal place to put the flower. I mean, you can figure out, like if you know where to place it, you can end up like figuring it out of where to put it, but that'll be kind of slow. Since if you check for each position and then loop through n, n times to greedily put one a new one in, that'll be a time complexity of uh, o of n squared, which is uh too slow, since that's uh four times ten, four times ten to the power of ten, which you need at really at most ten to the eighth, but you can get away with a little more, definitely not ten to the ten. So that's why that was to make you think of some sort of op or uh, data structure, or whatever that can allow o of one or o of log n, and something that will help in this case would be prefix sums. So you can determine at any, so you can use this at a B array actually, and you can see like in the prefix, which index is required for you to reach a certain flower. So if you go from the prefix here, then four, you you can get to flower four and in index two, you can get to in uh flower, you can get over here, you get to get your second flower with, uh, index at the uh, index seven. So then you can't. Then you can get do this two at index 
uh, 9, but you can't do this 4, so it's just going to be negative 1. 6 will also be negative 1. Then if you go in the suffix now, so if you go in the suffix, you need a beauty of at least 6, so this will match here. You need a beauty of at least 4, this will match here. Beauty of at least 3, this one will match here. And then you don't have any beauty of 6, so this will just be negative 1, and then this will also be negative 1. So then you notice that if I redraw some of them back here, so then this will be like this. Well, what if instead you had this 6, instead of it being uh, going to 8, you insert a new one. So you could also insert it here too. Like if you just insert a 6 here, and you always insert the beauty you're missing, because that's the least possible. So then you notice that these all work already to the right. This one already works here. So then you notice there's only one left here, the 6. So then you notice you can just add one here. So that's the, basically the solution to this problem. You have, uh, yeah, you, you have the uh, prefix and suffix sums of this, or a, a logic of prefix and suffix sums to just store the values. And you can use it on this M array because you're going to have a specific value for each one. So as you can see in my code here, you have a prefix and suffix. They all start with, off with negative one. And it's basically start off with negative one unless proven otherwise. So you start off with index zero for a prefix. And you keep going until you find a flower that works for B of I. And then as long as the index is still in range, then you set the prefix to be that index and you add one so you don't repeat flowers. S same thing with the uh, suffix. You just, the key thing is just you go backwards this time. So then then you try getting the best possible value of, of the minimum k. So the first thing to notice is if the prefix of the last one is not equal to negative 1, that means you can get all of them without adding a single flower. So then you can just put best equals 0. That's like an edge case that you can do. And then you can loop for uh, 0 to m minus 1. Uh, you could do if i is not equal to m minus 2, then there's extra cases for you to check for. Then if prefix of i is not equal to negative 1, and suffix of i plus 2 is not equal to negative 1, that means that, and, and prefix of i is less than suffix of i plus 2. So what what's this basically saying is, if you have, that you, you can go to the i flower in the prefix, you can go to the i plus second flower in the suffix, and the index of the prefix of i is less than the index of the suffix of i plus 2. So then there's a place for you to insert one. Then you just update best as a minimum between best and b of i plus 1. You're inserting it as the i beauty of i plus 1. Otherwise, if i is not equal to m minus 2, I mean, do you only really need to check if prefix of i is not equal to negative 1? So then best equals minimum of best and b of i plus 1, since there's nothing after. And you also have to check. The, so that's one edge case. And this is an also an edge case. If suffix of 1 is not equal to negative 1, then you just have best is equal to mi the minimum of best and b of 0. And the reason why these two are edge cases, uh, this one and this one, is because uh, they, they only use either one of suffix or prefix, whereas any of these in here use both, suffix and prefix, and then adding one. And then if best is equal to long, long max, you can just update best. And this is just a way to save time coding. So then you can just print best once. And that's how you solve uh, Igor and Flower Boy. So the tips for this problem would just be to think about just any data structures you know that could save the... Any any data structures that could save uh time. So you always think about think about the brute force first and then think about any other possible way that could do it that could uh improve the time complexity. So that's generally a good method of solving problems. Go from the O of n squared solution. And then you can go uh see hmm, how can I update this to maybe O of n log n or O of n. So that's how you solve these types of problems.
So yeah, thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.